Welcome to Living in Victory. I'm your host, Pastor Roger. Praise the Lord. We are doing part two with uh, Apostle David King, and we are talking about the 90-day challenge. Yes. This is exciting. This is awesome. This is uh, transformation. This is very practical, and it doesn't matter if uh, it doesn't matter if you're a, a, a minister, right, or you or, or an agnostic. <laughs> I mean, really, let's right. be honest here. Yeah. You're going to take this 90-day challenge, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. You know, and, and if you're, you know, if you're a minister, this is something that you can take with you. You can, you can go through some of this training. Yes. And now you've got a tool to effectively bring, you know, what Romans 12, 2 talks about, the renewing of the mind. Yes. So we can see the transformation of people's lives. Right. You know, and, and if you haven't watched part one of this, I would really encourage you to watch part one. We shared our, some, some testimonies about the power, it, the power of uh, what God has put in your hands, what God's put in your heart and your mind. And this 90 day challenge is something that you've been using for years, God gave you this outline to see transformation in your people yes. and to be able to see lives change. But even you've been using it for years, but because of all the, the lockdowns and a lot of the things going on uh, with not being able to, to do a lot of the face-to-face -face ministry you, ha you have been doing for, you know, 20-some yes. years, yes. Um, all of a sudden you started using like Zoom video conferencing, yeah. video, video conferencing to do the 90-day challenge. Yes. And as you saw... Uh, as we've all seen in ministry, the unprecedented, so the rates of like depression and anxiety and fear and suicidal thoughts and even suicides and drug addiction and all these things soaring, God gave you a way, gave you inspiration to get this out. Now, now you have a manual, yes. <laughs> this, the, the 90 day challenge manual right here that God's inspired you to put together. Put together so yeah. this, this, this tool that you've been given by God that he's developed in you and used through you for a number of years now all now suddenly yes has become packaged in a manner that it can be you know you talked about Genesis 128 be fruitful and multiply, multiply yes and that's what God's having you do with this and this oh, is yes. so exciting yes and it's also you know I like to tell people you know when when people try to sell things like on TV and stuff like that you know they'll say to you this has been test and proven the manual been tested and proven that it works Praise the Lord. through lives. We have testimonies on top of testimony of people going through the 90 day challenge and their lives been changed. Mm, amen. You know, so it's been tested and proven that it works. Praise the Lord. And, you know, and it's it's what this what this 90 day challenge is, is it gets people into the word, into the word, pushes them into the word and keeps them in the word. Yes. And within that 90 days. Man, yeah. they, they are transformed. They transform. <laughs> they have no choice but to be. If they, if they, like we talked about in the in the first segment, if they if they are fat, if they're faithful, available, and teachable, they're going to be transformed. They they will receive more knowledge and experience of God in their lives than they did just sitting in church. Yeah, and that's the, you know, unfortunately, that is such a common thing. Is people, they love. God, they're genuinely born again. They have, you know, they've made Lord, you know, Jesus their personal Savior. But yet they just haven't engaged at that level to see the real transformation occur. And until, you know, until people engage in that level to, of, of the Word, mm -hmm. the Spirit of God is limited in what the Spirit of God can reveal. Right. You know, because this, you know, faith comes through hearing and hearing comes through the Word. Yes. And if the Spirit is telling you something that's in the Word, but you don't know it's in the Word, right? then you don't have faith for it. You're like, well, that must you be don't. my imagination. Right. You know, oh, that must, well, I don't know why, why, why I'm thinking that way. Yes. Well, the Spirit of God is bringing you revelation. He's trying to bring you revelation, and He's ministering the Word from the inside of you, but you're not getting it because your mind has not yet been renewed to what the Word of God actually says. You know, and that's like what James, in James chapter 1, what right. James warns about. He says, hey, uh, if, you know, whatever you need, just ask God and he's going to give it to you. Right. If you need wisdom, he's going to give it to you. But don't be double-minded. Right. Because if you ask for something, but you don't believe you're going to get it, you're not going to get, get it. Because <laughs> you're a double-minded person and you're unstable in all your ways. Right. And the reality is so many Christians are double-minded because they're illiterate in the word. Right. 
they're illiterate. They haven't taken the time to renew their mind according to God's word. They're never going to, as 2 Peter 1, 3, 1, 4 talks about, they will not be able to participate in the divine nature of God because they don't even know the precious yeah. promises of Scripture. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, you know, that's just like when you say, when, 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 um, when people say, I have faith, and, and, he, and, and, and in the Bible he says, okay, I'll tell you what. Show me a man that says he have faith with no works. Mm. And then I'll show you my faith by my works. <laughs> yeah. So the 90 days it. makes them work yeah. so they can have faith. Yeah, I love it. You know, I love it. And, and, and a lot of times we was, you know, and I share with people all the time, uh, knowledge is information. Mm. Okay. But wisdom is application. Oh, that's good. So you can have knowledge. And you, and, and you have the information of God, you can even have understanding, you can comprehend who God is. But if the, you, you will never have wisdom if you never put it to, into play. Mm. You know, and in, in the manual, my motto says, to see is to forget, to hear is to remember, but to do is to understand. Oh, that's good stuff. You know, so <laughs> in that 90 days, that's what they do. They have to do. Yeah. You know, you're not just hearing. You have to do. And what we have done is we, you know, and we, we had uh, good intentions. You know, we brought people to the church so they can hear. But there was never no do. Mm. So there was never no transformation. In this, this program, inspired by the, by, by the Holy Spirit, infused with the Word of God, inspired by God, His Word, gives you the opportunity to have a vehicle Yes. Of transformation. Of transformation. Of the, the doing of the word. Yes. And, you know, and if somebody was actually doing in this age, if somebody's actually doing the 90 the day challenge with you, they're going to, what, what, one hour a week? One hour, one hour a week. And they're in that, not one hour, they would log into a Zoom call with you. And we go through, um, we we'll go through that hour of, of um, the 90 day challenge. And it's one hour. And then they would then there would be actual assignments. Then they get homework. Homework. Every 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 week they got homework. And then every, And then homework add on to homework. And then every week they have that face to face. That face to face. And we or when we say face to face, we mean video. Video. Or we can meet in person or, or if you in, in the area and you want to meet in person. Yeah, but 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 because of technology, this ninety day challenge is right now because of the way God has led you over yes. these last few months. Instead of being in a in a uh, a time of famine where oh no I can't minister to anybody all of a sudden you're like wait a minute the whole world is mine exactly <laughs> wait a minute I can minister to people anywhere I, anywhere if they're in Africa and they I get up in the middle of the night because I know our time zone is different mm. and do a ninety day challenge oh praise the do you hear that you people know in Africa we know you're watching we know you watching Nigeria and, yeah and the Philippines, the Philippines same way in Malawi we know yeah. you're watching. So, Praise the Lord. Take them up on it. You know, so we can, you know, we can do it because. Pastor Tim, I'm telling you. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's about setting the people free. Mm. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that word taste, he means experience God. Yeah. To see. In that 90 day challenge, they will experience God and they'll know he's good. And they'll have that exper experiential knowledge. Yes. When it talks about no. No. Know the Lord. Yes. Not know of the Lord, but know, know him. Know Yes. Know him in a personal, intimate way. Oh, yes. So now, I, can we just take a little moment here and just go kind of through some of the topics of that you guys cover in this 90-day challenge? Oh, yes. Okay. I love this manual, man. You did a nice job. This is great. Wow. This is really... I... I, I I, and again, I just got this, like, as we were walking in the studio, he's <laughs> yes. like, here, check it out. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, week one, coming into agreement with God. Yes. That's the first thing people got to do. Wow. In order for the 90-day challenge to be where, um, to be effective, in order to do the 90-day challenge, you have to come in agreement and say, okay, God, whatever you say about me, I'm going to accept it. Hmm. That's the first thing you have to do. Wow. That's the first thing. Come in agreement. Whatever God's word says about you, and I'll show you in the word what he says, and you have to come in agreement with that. Uh, like James 1, 23, 24 says it's the spiritual mirror that shows you yes. who you are 
And when you keep looking at it, you're not going to forget who you are. That's it. Praise God. Week two, I was not a mistake. Well, you know, and, and that one, with, with that one, I love that one because of the fact that so many people um, that is, is depressed start to wonder why was they ever born? Why am I here? Why is, 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 is things happening? You know, I shouldn't even be here. But I have to let them know, no matter what they're going through in their life, your father released 500 million sperm cells in your mom. Mm. And you the only one hit the egg. Right. You're not a mistake. Right. <laughs> you beat 500 million others out to get here. Exactly. So you're not a mistake. You just got to find out why you're here. So through the 90 days, we start showing them why they're here. Yeah. And I, you know, again, for, for people who don't, um, don't struggle with these questions and and I think almost everybody does that at some point in their life you know but I think what happens a lot of times is that we as believers you know if you've been a believer for a long time you some of us can kind of forget what it was like and forget that right. like hey no there's really people out there yes wondering like why are they even here what's the point you know and I mean again I, I ministered I ministered to a, a family a, that on the outside, this very recently, on the outside, they look like everything's great. On the inside, it's like, you, you know, right. praise God that, you know, yeah. his word is going to heal what needs to be healed. And here's the funny part about that. When, you, when we say to somebody that's, that's a believer and they say, oh, well, I, I, I know I wasn't a mistake. Okay, then why are you here? <laughs> What's your purpose? Your purpose is not to, to be born go to school, get an education, get a career, get married, and then die. Why are you here? Oh, um, yes, exactly. So if you don't know why you're here, then, and you're living a, 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 a life that is not fulfilling your potential, then you're living a mistake. Wow. Because if you're not here to fulfill your potential, you're living a mistake. Wow. 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 That's so so it makes direct. that's pretty direct. <laughs> right. So it makes everybody start to think, okay, God, why am I here? You know? Yeah. Because look how many people got careers and they and they got good, nice home, nice everything, but they still missing something. Yeah. Because there's they was not they was never told why you were here. So even though I go out and I do uh nice business, nice job, nice family but still something missing. And that is why the cemetery is the richest place in the world. Because hmm. everybody, so many people die full of potential because yeah. they didn't know why they was here. Yeah. So that's why. And so then in that week too, they're going to get. Oh, they're going to get. They're going to get. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And the reason they're going to get is because, um, in one of the scriptures, Jeremiah, in the Amplified Version, Jeremiah said, before you was formed in the womb, mm. God said, I knew you and approved of you. So if God knew me and approved of me, then it's like, approve me for what? Because the manufacturing is from heaven. So before he allowed you to be released, you was already tested for something. So what was you tested for? Mm. Wow. It's just like, just like this iPhone. In the box, you got a book that says this iPhone can do all kind of things. How do they know? Because they tested it. Right. Praise the Lord. So God said, before you went in, I knew you. I tested you. Yeah. Okay. So, so when we look at our lives, our cars can go up to 180 miles an hour. But the world system says you only can do 70. So even though you're doing 70, you still ain't at your limit. So even though we got a nice job, a family, money, we still not at our limit. We only allow, we only live in the way the system told us, but that ain't what God approved us for. Mm. So now we got to know what we was approved for. Yeah. And, and that is going to come when people get the revelation, not from you, but from God. But from God. Yes. And this challenge directs them. Straight to God. Straight to God. So 
you're not going through the, the roster saying, and this is your purpose, and this is your purpose, and oh, yeah. I need somebody to do this. So yeah, that's your job, you know. Right. You get to be the greeter. <laughs> <laughs> so when they ask me, so what do you think? I don't think you go to God. Mm. God will give you the answer himself. Oh, praise the Lord. And that's why it's so powerful. Yeah, tra transformational. Yes. Transformational. And when people, have a, when people understand their purpose, then they can fulfill their destiny. Oh, yes. And until that happens, like you said, they're unfortunately living a mistake. They live in a mistake. You know, and certainly living below their potential. Oh, yeah. Now, week three, I must apply the word. Yes. This is where they have to make sure everything they're doing, they're applying the word of God to everything. Everything that they got to do, they got to apply the word. Everything. Forgiveness, apply the word. Mm. Uh, forgiving themselves. Um, even on the job. Um, and, and in that, <clears throat> excuse me, in that week of applying, you're going to see something happen. I give an example, the young lady with the testimony. She was working for uh, Olive Garden. And I said to her, what I need you to do is pray over your tables. Mm. Speak the word of God over your tables. And I, and, I, and I shared it with her scriptures and she went and she spoke over her tables. And people started to... Uh, by her week one agreeing who God says she was to week three applying it, I told her, you're going to speak that your name is going to be famous and distinguished, that when customers come in, they're going to start asking for you. When she went to week three and started applying, hmm. customers started asking for her. Wow. So the moment she started applying, she started to see, oh, this is real. Oh, my God, it works. So applying the word is very important. Praise the Lord. Yeah. As this is where you have that. It's right here in the manual. To hear is to forget, to see is to remember, and to do is to understand. Yes. And it's the doing. It's the doing. It's the application. Yeah, it's the application of God's word. You will never understand the word of God until you apply it. Until you apply it. You'll never understand it. And then um, the transformation begins yes. to take root. You know, the word of God takes root immediately. It takes root immediately. But by the time they get through with the homework in week two to week three, then that's when their, um, their transformation really starts to take off. Hmm. Yes. Wow. In week four, I am my biggest enemy. Yes. And the reason I'm my biggest enemy, because a lot of times we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. And, and most of us is based off of what we've been hearing all our lives. You nothing. You're mm -hmm. nobody. You're a loser. So now you start to see yourself like that. But you never see yourself the way God see you. And, 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 and most people walk around with a spirit of failure. And, and what I mean by that is they do things and they have success for a little while. And then they do something to mess up their success because they never saw themselves successful. Right. So I'm my biggest enemy. Right. So and through my whole life, because why? I don't even see myself the way God see me. Because if I saw myself the way God see me, and that's why I'm able to say, and like you said in, in, in an earlier show, I don't care if I have any friends because I see myself the way God see me. If I didn't see myself the way God see me, then I want friends. Why? Because my friend would start to validate me. Mm. I got to validate myself first. I don't need a person to validate me, but I'm my biggest enemy if I don't see myself the way God sees me. Because you're always going to be self in that self-sabotage mode. Yes. That self-limiting, self-sabotage mode. Yes. And that's where the enemy wants to keep you. Right. You know, what scripture says, what can separate us from God? Neither height nor depth, nor principalities, right. nor powers, nor life, nor death. But you can separate yourself from God. Right. You see yourself the wrong way. You know, you're not really, you're separated in your mind. You're not in your spirit. But God wants us to be renewed in our mind yes. so that he can r r flow through us. Yes. You know, not just to us, but through us. Yep. That is so true. I love it. I love it. Yes. Now, week five. Oh, wanna... Week five, I must die to myself. Well, that sounds like a fun one. 
Oh, that <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a good one. That, that, Is this your pop, most popular week? Oh, you want to jump right to that? Oh one? yeah, because I'd be one of. <laughs> but uh, week five, once I realized I'm my biggest enemy, then I got to get rid of me. Hmm. And the only way I can get rid of me if I die to myself. If I, if I just, you know, unless a corn falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. Hmm. So in order for God to really rise up, I got to die. I got to get rid of me. What is my interest? What is my, my desires? What is, what is, what's, what's hindering me from having that ultimate relationship with God? My flesh. My flesh stops everything. Why? Because my flesh thinks too much. My flesh wants everything to make sense. With God, everything don't make sense. That's why faith is there. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith in God. You can't wait to see it to have faith. But, yo, but, but if I don't die to me, then I'm not going to see. I will always look from the eyes. How should I say this? I will always look from the eyes of Clark Kent, not Superman. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> because Clark Kent was normal. Superman was supernatural. I'm a supernatural being. So I have to see myself. And I can't see the supernatural being in me until I die. Well, like Scripture says, you, you, you got to stop thinking like mere mortals. Right. You know, and, and a lot of times people think when we talk about dying to flesh, like we're saying, oh, you're a Christian now. You can't have any fun anymore. You know, yes. like Christians are like the least... And unfortunately, a lot of times Christians are like the least happy people you meet. But, you know, mm. but that's not because they died to themselves. That's because they're believing lies about themselves. Right. You know, when you really, you know, like Colossians chapter three says, you know, you have died with Christ. Right. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Because now you're seated. You got to realize you're seated in heavenly places and it's no longer you that live, but it's a Christ in you. Yes. And that's when you switch from Clark Kent to Superman. Exactly. And then when, when, when I died to self then the angels can come and minister unto me because here's the thing the, they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So if flesh is in the way, I can't manifest. But if, if I, if I move flesh out the way, then guess what? When the angels look down, they're going to be like, Oh, he looked like God. Mm. He's not talking like he's poor. He's not talking sickly. He's not talking broke because why? That part of me died. Yeah. And, and really like dying to your, dying to your flesh is not about not having fun. Dying to your flesh is about casting off the limits of your flesh. Yes. And fully embracing the supernatural power of Christ in you. Oh, yes. You know, like you said, you're, you, you're dying, to, dying to your flesh is saying, I don't have to live in poverty. I don't have to. Dying to your flesh is saying, you know what? I, you know, maybe this, is, maybe this is who society says I am. Maybe this is who my parents are. But my flesh doesn't define me. That's right. My Savior defines me. That's the it. Word of God defines me. That's, you can go ahead and teach this, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But that, that is so true, though. And, 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 you know, and the hardest part is us seeing ourselves. Because here's the thing about it. Remember when God called Jeremiah and went, and when, when God called Jeremiah, one of the things that happened was this. Uh, God told Jeremiah, I approved of you. God told Jeremiah, I have appointed you. And Jeremiah still said, but I'm a child. Mm. He, he went from seeing himself the way God just say how he saw him to I'm a child. One of our biggest problems is we always see ourselves from our downfalls. Mm. You know, that's how we see ourselves, from our downfalls. We see ourselves from our shortcomings. I can't do that for God. I ain't got a degree. If God told you to do it, that means he already qualified you to do it. Quit trying to holler for a degree and go do it. Right. You know, and that's what people are doing. Right, right. You know, and that's really, you know, setting people free to be all that God's called them to be. Yes. Setting people free from, from their flesh, from, from their from their carnal limitations to be free to fully embrace yes. everything that the, everything the word of God says about them. Everything. You know, because until we can get past our ourselves, God can't get through us. That's right. He can't. You know, and we got to get we got to get beyond that self-limiting, got to get up beyond that self-doubting. And we have to see the people of God rise up. Yes. You know? 
And we can't be that tree of life if we still that seed. Hmm. So until we die, then that tree can come out of us. But if we don't die, that tree can never come forth. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So I, you know, we are running out of time really quickly here. I'm, I'm a little surprised. I happened to look at the clock and I'm like, my goodness, we only have like three minutes left. Right. How did this happen? I thought we were going to get through this. But this is really good stuff. Will you, will you come back and we can do one more? Yes. I, I just want to, you know, I want to, you know, again, and, and as we're going through this, like we're, we're just touching the topics right. very, I, just just because it's so such good information. I just wanted you guys to hear what is in this program. But we're, we're just touching it. Just, For somebody really to uh, fully embrace this training program, they need to, at a minimum, uh, contact you, reach out to you, yes. get the manual, sign up for that 90-minute uh, crash course on how to apply the manual, the manual in yes. conjunction with the Word of God and see that breakthrough happen. Yes. You know, and, but I, I truly believe there's going to be a lot of people that are going to, you know, I I I'm gonna say, you know, I want to go through this course with you. Yeah. I want to take. The, I, 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 wanna, I see that too. You know, and then maybe after I take the course, then I'll go through the. Uh, then I'll you can turn around and start training other people right. here. You know, um, but for for you pastors and ministers that watch this show, you know, there's an opportunity here to get get a tool in your hand that you can apply and that you can use for your people. And you know. If, if somebody's really well-versed and really confident and they say, you know what, I want the manual, I want to do that crash course, 90-minute training session, I believe I'm going to be able to take this manual, apply the Word of God in a systematized way <clears throat> that's going to bring that 90 days transformation. Praise God, that's an option for you. Yes. You know, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, the reason why we're doing this show is because I have seen firsthand, yes. like literally, <laughs> you know, which, which is like so such a God setup, right. you know, that we talked about this in the first show. I've seen firsthand the transformation yes. from someone walking in day, night number one and me seeing them to, and being suicidal to saying, you know what, if this doesn't work in 90 days, I'm just going to kill myself. Right. And I've seen that transformation in that person. I'm like, right. Wow, praise God. This 90, this, you know, I'm not just listening to you telling me how great it is. Even if I was, I'd, st I'd believe you because right. you've got a track record with me, but I've seen the fruit right. of what, what this 90 day challenge does. Yes. You know, and I've seen, and it's like, it's awesome because we can see people sit in church for years. Yes. But we can see people, but we can also see people's lives trans change, transform transformation, change, radical change, yes. complete turnarounds, complete, you know, complete rededications to Christ, com you know, just, just to, when they take the word of God and they apply it. Yes. And that's what this program does. It takes the word, makes it Made, applicable. Makes apply. Yes. Hey, I think we got like a minute <laughs> <Okay>. left. <laughs> My clock is right here. Um, would you close this in prayer one more time? We're going to come back with, with a third part. We're going to finish up this manual, going through it. We're not finishing. We're just touching on the topics, man. There's so much gold here. Yes. But if you would just close this in prayer, that would be awesome. All right. Father, we just thank you for this show. We thank you for everyone that's watching, no matter where they're at around the world. And we thank you, Lord, that you have put a tool that we can touch lives from anywhere in the earth, just being at home, being in our office, or wherever we may be. And I pray, Lord, that everyone that's watching and listening who is at the end of their rope, that they will contact us, that we will be able to help them get to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you want to reach out to uh, Apostle King, that information has been on the screen throughout the show, the, the phone number, the email address, please reach out to him and get this. Until next time, keep living in victory. We love you. We'll be back with part three in Jesus' name.